Here's a typical learning curve for reinforcement learning when you train on a task with sparse rewards. Most, most time is spent on exploration, but once we find the goal, RL can solve the task quickly. Um, in the real world, RL agents have to adapt quickly to new tasks. One example is a robot factory where in the warehouse, robots do task agnostic training. Then when they're placed in someone's house, the robot has to quickly adapt to the tasks specified by the human. Here's a quick overview of our talk. So our goal is to acquire a single exploration policy that can solve a wide distribution of downstream tasks. Our contributions are the following. First, we introduce a formal objective to quantify good exploration. This objective encourages exploration and also provides an efficient mechanism for injecting prior knowledge into our policy. Second, we derive a principled algorithm to maximize this objective. Lastly, we show competitive empirical results on hard exploration tasks for locomotion and manipulation. Our objective tries to match the blue and orange distributions where the blue histogram is the policy's state marginal distribution and the orange line is a target distribution P star. So what is the state marginal distribution pi of s? We define it as the expected number of times the policy visits a state. Let's assume fixed horizon episodes, but this assumption is easy to relax. To sample a state from pi of s, we roll out a trajectory using the policy, then sample a random state from that trajectory. To avoid confusion, the state marginal distribution is integrating over time steps, not over the state dimensions. We can easily inject prior knowledge into the target distribution p star by placing higher mass on states that we know are good. To match distributions, we minimize the KL divergence between pi and p star. Note that this objective is zero when pi is exactly equal to p star. In the special case when p star is uniform, the objective simply maximizes entropy over the state marginal. More generally, if a p star can be any distribution and our objective looks like this. From this expansion, we immediately see that our objective is equivalent to maximizing this reward function in blue text with a state entropy regularized policy. Um, intuitively, the objective says to put more reward on states you don't visit enough and less on states that you visit too often. Um, note that our, uh, the objective depends on the policy pi in two places. First, to compute the expectation, we sample states from pi of s. Second, inside the expectation, we compute the density under pi. So we have this cyclic dependency where the reward function depends on the policy, so we can't just apply standard RL. To break this cyclic dependency, we learn a separate density estimator q that approximates the state marginal distribution. We replace the true density with Q in the reward function. Then the objective becomes a two-player zero-sum game between the policy pi and the density Q. Note that there always exists a fixed point solution by Nash's theorem. Um, this objective is saying to sample states from the policy's state marginal, update the state density model Q, then optimize the policy using reinforcement learning on the reward defined by log of p star minus uh, log of q. So our algorithm alternates between these two steps. First, updating the density with the states visited by the policy, and updating the policy with the reward defined by the density. Um, Finally, uh, we use a mixture of policies to be able to capture complex target distributions more easily. So each latent condition policy has its own state distribution, and the state marginal distribution takes a weighted average of them. Uh, in this mixture case, our objective produces a reward of this form, which has a nice decomposition. The first uh, state prior term says to go to states with high density under the target distribution. The second state entropy term says explore a wide range of states. The third diversity term says um, the latent conditioned policies should visit different states. 
And finally, the last uh, latent entropy term says to explore a wide range of latent variables Z. Okay. Um, lastly, we emphasize that RL does not do state marginal matching. Instead, it will go to the mode of the target distribution. We note that maximum entropy RL, which matches distribution over trajectories, also suffers from this mode collapse problem. Um, next, uh, Ben will talk about connections to prior work and experimental results. Our project has strong ties to prior work in many related areas of reinforcement learning. First, there's been considerable work on both exploration algorithms and algorithms for intrinsic motivation, both of which result in good exploration during training. Second, state marginal matching makes sense in multitask settings, where you might want to learn a policy that can adapt quickly to multiple downstream tasks. There's likewise been a lot of work in this setting. Our experiments are going to focus on both the exploration and this multitask meta-learning aspect of state marginal matching. Finally, it's worth noting that the idea of matching distributions with reinforcement learning is not new and has been explored in both maximum entropy reinforcement learning and inverse reinforcement learning. Though both of these previous applications of this idea make somewhat different assumptions. We'd be happy to talk more about prior work at the poster session. Let's move on to some experiments. Our experiments will focus on two tasks, manipulation and locomotion. For the locomotion task, we're going to have an agent spawn at the center of radially extending hallways, sort of like the spokes of a wheel. We can vary the number of hallways and the length of each hallway to programmatically increase the difficulty of the exploration task. In this environment, you can run experiments both with a simple 2D point mass and with a higher dimensional quadruped robot. During training, the robot will have access to some distribution over plausible goal locations. And then at test time, we will sample a goal from the same distribution, and the robot should hopefully move to this goal state as quickly as possible. The second environment that we look at is a manipulation environment, where we consider tasks that are picking and placing. During, as before, during training, the robot will have access to plausible goal locations, in this case, just for the block. And at test time, we will sample a goal from this distribution, and the robot should move the block to this goal location as quickly as possible. For this task, the target distribution will also include some priors on actions being small and the robot arm being close to the block. Note that the baselines will have access to all of the same information for fair comparison. There are two important things to note about both environments. First, the goals that we sample at test time will not be observed, and so the agent must explore to find this goal state. Second, the density model that we learn is a VAE, so it's easy to scale to high dimensional observations. Our experiments focus on first questions, on, on two questions. The first question is to study whether the exploration provided by state marginal matching can accelerate solving a single task. To answer this question, we look at the, lo the locomotion environment. We hide a goal at the end of one of these hallways and define our target distribution to put high mass around the goal. The agent doesn't know in what hallway the goal is located, so it must explore to find the goal. During training, we're going to count the number of episodes until the agent finds the goal. In the plot above, we plot the number of episodes that it took to find the goal. So lower is going to be better. And we see that our method, shown in red, can find the goal even as we increase the hallway length, making exploration harder. In contrast, a state-of-the-art RL baseline, shown in blue, fails to solve the task as the length of the hallway increases. The other lines indicate various ablations of our method that we can talk about at the poster session. So in this first experiment, we saw how marginal matching enabled us to solve a single task more quickly. The next experiment is going to focus on the multitask aspect of state marginal matching. For this quest, to answer this question, we use the manipulation environment. We define the target distribution for the block position to be uniform over the table, and then during training, we do state marginal matching against this target distribution. And we compare against the same baseline as before, soft actor critic, where the target, where the reward function is defined to be density under the target distribution. At test time, we're gonna sample a goal location for the block from the table and count the number of episodes until the agent finds this goal location. 
And one small note is that to avoid trivial solutions where the goal is sampled right next to the block, we ensure that the goals are at least some distance from the block, which explains the circle shown in the center here. So these plots here are showing the goals that we sample at test time. And we're gonna color each of the dots by whether the policy succeeded in finding that goal at test time. The red dots on the left plot show that the RL baseline fails to find most of, most of the goals. It fails to do good exploration at test time. In contrast, state marginal matching succeeds in finding most of the goals, as indicated by the red dots on the right. To gain some more intuition for the method, we can plot the success throughout tr the testing phase. And we observe that the baseline, shown in green, fails to solve a large portion of the tasks, whereas our method, shown in blue, can quickly adapt within about 100 episodes to solve tasks, tasks specified at test time. Finally, we can visualize the learned policies, which provides even more intuition for why we expect our method to explore well at test time. If a goal is sampled, how likely is it that the policy will find, will move, will randomly move the block to that goal location? So in summary, our experiments have shown how marginal matching allows for good exploration and quick adaptation to new tasks. Sort of in summary, we believe that this approach, state marginal matching, is an effective technique for mitigating challenges of both exploration and adaptation in reinforcement learning. We encourage you to visit the poster afterwards. Thanks.